Hello fellow sim builders, this is a quick video about how I used Calibration Pro to get the pictures from the projectors as I wanted. As you can see the projectors are far from aligned, they are now overlapping and the picture is not at all what it should be. Uh, this is Immersive Display Pro which I have set up earlier, you can check out my videos on that one. I'm running the Calibration Pro from a network PC, but that's basically the same thing. You can run it from the same PC as your projectors if you like. First I start the client window, which uh, gives me this one down here. You can click it up so you can see it says show here and there are the three projectors shown and my two screens. Then I go over to my network PC, which has the server software. Uh, I will first show you how I have done it. This is my. This is the first window where you can create a new project, and uh, from here you can select what whatever you like. There are different kind of possibilities: cylindrical, cone, horseshoe, and so on. You can choose whatever you like and then it calculates for you and map on projector or map on camera this one you can choose also whether your system is required depending on what you what you have so you can either have it have a separate camera that looks at the screen for you and then you get alignment from that but since I don't have that I take map on projector so then it will show on the screen anyhow load project file then I will be loading my project here and as soon as I have done, done this it will go dark like this it says one client connected and it should now project out those images from the projector so there are the border lines of the projectors eventually the third one will also follow and then it's finished there, is, there you go and then continuing on this uh, screen right here it should go to the next page just one and here we go and then I'll just make this picture larger for us to see. Then I'll go to the next page, which is the editorial or the edit page. Here you can already see I have pre aligned these, but I need some more alignment now. So, what I can do here is uh, this is basically projector number one, starting from the left to the right. These are how the projected image is sent from the projector to the screen. As you can see, it's pretty straight, there is some correction needed, but anyhow it's more or less like it should be when you look at the screen. As you see here, it's far from what it looks like on the screen. That's the point. Selecting number two shows the second grid. Selecting number three shows the third grid. There you go. And there you can see there are some inconsistencies due to my mounting of the camera of the projectors which is not very good. So anyhow the thing you do here is uh, there are buttons to select here. You can choose how many columns, how many where to start. You have to remember that they have to overlap. So number nine has to be just uh, on the on the second uh, on the middle projector the second projector has to stop in my case on number nine and there you can see the number one is almost aligned with the third projector which is the one to the most of the right which also starts with number nine so this is a very, very important thing these numbers Columns begin and rows begin have to be corresponding to each and every view. If I select number 2, you can see that it ends at number 9 here and starts by number 5. 
if I select projector number one, which is the leftmost, it ends as number five. So these columns are overlapping. Always on, on the border, of course. And this is how my second projector is projected on the screen, more or less. So to correct these faults which I have here, I can uh, start by either I can choose which projector I want to adjust. In this case, I could do a small adjustment to projector number three, which is it looks a bit funny because my my wall is not the best. Anyhow, I can choose to move one single point, a row, a column, all and rotate. I can choose to move them either X or Y or X, Y. So I choose to move them freely. So instantly when I start moving this furthermost dot upwards, you can see how it bends like this. So it's just a, a matter of uh, getting these aligned. And there are dots in, in the intersections, so you can get them very easily aligned. There's usually no problem in that one. So, therefore, I'll just stretch them, move them to the point where I see that they are very nicely aligned. Like so, for instance. But of course I have to adjust all the points to get it straight and so on. But uh, I will be skipping a bit for you so you can see what it looks like when it's more or less aligned. Okay, so basically this is roughly it. I didn't take more time to adjust it now just for showing purposes. Uh, anyhow after you have uh, got the dots and alignment like you want to there are many options how to proceed but uh, what I've done is the following first you have to calculate the single virtual camera so that uh, you get the the usual desktop view so that is single virtual camera right here. Of course, remember always to save down here your projects. Okay. Uh, calculate single virtual camera. Does this shows you the logos over here and then it calculates right here for projectors individually. Takes a while. After that is done, there will be a test page or a test picture in your screen, uh, in your projectors, which will be there shortly, which roughly shows you how the picture will be looking. So there you have the test pattern, like so. And this is not an important thing. You need to adjust your angles and distances so that this test pattern shows correctly on your screen unless unless you do that you will do the mistake I did and it will not be either centered or it will be too stretched or whatever how to do that is to go into settings there are many things you can adjust here but these are the most important how many degrees in angle and what's your radius bottom and top and so on and the, here you can choose how many columns and how many rows this will now give you the distances these adjustments are shown in the tutorial worth reading it so the important thing is you have to measure that these correspond to your adjustments okay uh, what we can do here also is go into here you can set how many percentage they go over or below but since I don't have that problem you can choose blend and uh, 
to do the blending here is this is a bit different from immersive display which has more in my opinion more accurate or more uh, versatile blending but this is not the, the case uh, here in here you have only three things to adjust or you have three things gain slope uh, my camera is not really following me here uh, gain slope and gamma so basically it's an it's a situation where you tune them so that they fit your preferences if you draw gain to zero there is vertical there is a vertical line practically no blending but if you add a bit then you get them to blend quite nicely and slope is, is of course how gradual the blending is like you see there it went to zero and if I add it to the other end it's close to 20 there's a lot of blending but that not that might not be good either so you have to find a sweet spot for you and uh, of course gamma does what gamma usually does increases or decreases could you say the contrast perhaps in this case okay so anyhow uh, after doing this you go to this one right here what does it say it says ah sorry for using the phone camera to this this is not good okay you go to this spot multifrostrum and here is the, where the interesting thing happened I use this either 3d tunnel which is very good it shows you quite nicely what you need here you can use asymmetric frostrum if you have a situation where you will be using multi view in view groups in prepared look that up more in the tutorial it's more complex than that uh, I'm using a single camera so I'm not using asymmetric first rooms and here you get the direct vertical FOB and aspect ratio so you can count whatever you like and here you get also you can adjust these to see that they don't overlap and well you can try it out for yourself rotation and so on calculate all projectors and now it will be calculating my frustrums. There you go. And what it has done now is I can now select to show a multi view 3D tunnel. And now we have a 3D tunnel, which is pretty neat. From whichever point I look, I look straight onto it as seen here. Now this is the amazing thing with a calibration probe. Here is the major differences with immersive display and calibration pro in my opinion. The picture is always correct as seen here. If you have done it correctly, that is. Okay. After that you need to calculate multiple vertical cameras in case you will be using that I use only single but anyhow it's never bad to use use that one either and then just hit export and then you can pick whatever you like here view groups prepared video groups for FSX prepared one prepared two and three and so on xplay DCS and general Okay, and also of course you can make a dome, but I, I really don't have that. Then I just export the file, or more specifically the files. I can now go over back to my original immersive display here on on the client PC which are connected to the projectors 
I can use in this case now instead of uh, configuring it through immersive display which of course is using that as a bottom I can use now external calibration and there it is this is my external calibration from that file and after clicking on that one I will show you in a short while and here we have the results saved okay after saving that project once again we are now able to close this and that picture will disappear like that and then we go back to the client PC and here we select external calibration and as I said I use the single single camera and you need to have this file uh, you need to have this file uh, also in config immersive uh, calibration pro config uh, directory and so on but you it the, the software will tell you that and then just open it and it's inserted now you go with your cursor above that and you can see that it has desktop calibration for single camera and external calibration then all you do is hit desktop warping and that should be it so what happens when you hit desktop calibration after you have done it correctly it should be automatic automatically converting the picture into a seamless but as you see it's not seamless because my blending is not correct either but anyhow you get the idea okay so then you have uh, all the files to insert also the frustrums which came with you in external uh, when you send the files over from your server PC and those you can use directly in prepared if you like okay and uh, after starting prepared you can see my projected images here like so and as you can see even though I move from captain's view to center or FL view the perspective still remains the same and this is the thing that calibration does best in assistance with immersive display pro this is why I can not emphasis on how versatile this software really is to use so any questions just hit me any either on facebook sim group or in this youtube tutorial or let's not call it a tutorial because i'm not a good good teacher the tutorial and the documents are on Fly Ellie's NG site. You should read them very carefully. They tell you the most things to do, and uh, they have a very good insight in helping simmers out in any problems that you have. So, good luck with this, and uh, thank you for watching.